uh, described as skin lesions. Uh, so our objective today first is know the difference between a primary, secondary skin lesions. Second, how to describe a uh, skin lesion. So we know that every science has its own language. And for dermatology, our own language is morphology. Uh, morphology to an engineer or scientist, it is the general structure regardless of its function. But in case of dermatology, uh, it is the general appearance of skin regardless of uh, the etiology or pathophysiology. For example, our language, which is uh, the primary uh, skin lesion and the secondary uh, skin uh, lesion. Uh, the primary skin lesion, it is the initial manifestation of pathological process, meaning that it, it is the lesions that have not been altered to the three T's, which are the first T is the time, the second T, which is the treatment, the third key is the external trauma, for example, scratching, rubbing, uh, and so on. Examples of uh, primary skin lesions are macule, patch, papule, black, nodule, pustule, wheel, vesicle, and bulla, and we will talk about them in the uh, next slide. First, macule uh, versus patch. Uh, first, macule, it is a flat, non-palpable, uh, legion will circumscribe and uh, they are characterized by difference in color from the surrounding uh, skin. Uh, in case of macule, it is less than one centimeter in diameter. A clinical example is uh, solar lentigenes. As we can see here in these pictures, we see these uh, hyperpigmented brownie uh, macules and some uh, patches uh, also. Now, now we will move to patches. Uh, patch, it is a macule, meaning that it is a flat, non-palpable, uh, will circumscribe and differ in color from the surrounding normal uh, skin. But the main difference uh, from, uh, the pa uh, from the macule is that it is larger than one centimeter in diameter. A clinical example is uh, vitiligo. We can see this uh, hypopigmented, well circumscribed uh, batch over the left cheek. Uh, match and, uh, um, batch and macule could be hypo or hyperpigmented or any color. Now we'll move to papule versus black. They are an elevated uh, skin lesion, so they are palpable will circumscribed in case of uh, in case of fabule it is less than one centimeter in diameter a clinical example is superior keratosis we can see here this single uh, brownie hyperpigmented lesion and we can see that it is elevated from the surrounding normal skin so it is uh, a palpable uh, skin lesion and we can see also this uh, gracie scale on top of it A black, it is a papule, meaning that it is an elevated skin lesion, will circumscribe, and it is palpable. And the only difference, again, is the size. Uh, in case of black, it is uh, larger than one centimeter in diameter. It could be uh, an epidermal black and dermal uh, black, according to the level of uh, this elevation. A clinical example of epidermal black is psoriasis. A clinical example of uh, dermal black is sarcoidosis. As we can see here, uh, as we can see here uh, on case of psoriasis, uh, these multiple uh, Solomon colored black and covered with this uh, silvery scale. Uh, in, case of, uh, in case of sarcoidosis, uh, the epidermal layer, as we can uh, see here in this diagram, that it, it has uh, the same thickness and the elevation is caused by a dermal factor. Now we'll move to nodule. 
uh, nodule, it is a palpable skin lesion, uh, usually larger than one centimeter in diameter. Up to now, it has the same definition of, uh, of, uh, of large, but the main difference is that in case of nodule, it involves uh, a deeper structure uh, like subcutaneous tissue and or dermis, and it has larger volume uh, also. Some textbooks say that, that uh, nodule, it has uh, one centimeter in depth. So you know that uh, it involves a deeper structure. A clinical example is epidermoid cyst. As we can see here, the, uh, it has larger volume and it, it involves the dermis and subcutaneous uh, tissue. Now we'll move to a vesicle versus pulla. In case of vesicle, it is an elevated uh, circumscribed less than one centimeter in diameter. And, uh, and it is filled with a fluid. This fluid could be clear, serous, or hemorrhagic. A clinical example is a uh, herbis uh, zoster. As we can see here, these multiple tiny vesicles uh, filled with a clear fluid uh, on erythematous space and erythematous uh, background also. In case of pulla, it is a, a vesicle, meaning uh, an elevated skin lesion uh, filled with the fluid, and this fluid could be uh, again uh, clear, serous, or hemorrhagic. Uh, the only difference between bulla and vesicle is the size, which is in case of bulla, it is larger than one centimeter uh, in diameter. A clinical example is bulla spinfigoid, which is uh, a vesicobullous or autoimmune uh, disease uh, causing uh, these tense fully to manifest uh, on the skin. Now we'll move to wheel. Wheel, it is a transient uh, elevation of the skin caused by presence of fluid in the dermal layer. A clinical example is uh, acute annular urticaria, and usually it is pale in the center and surrounded with these uh, erythematous uh, rims. Now we'll move to pustule. Pustule, it is an elevated uh, circumscribed uh, skin lesion. Usually it is less than one centimeter in diameter. Uh, up to now, it has the same definition of vesicles, but the main difference between pustule and vesicle uh, is the content of uh, the material. Uh, in case of vesicle, as we said, that it contains fluid, and this fluid could be clear, serous, or hemorrhagic, but uh, in case of pustule, uh, it contains virulent uh, fluid. It could be follicularly centered or non follicularly centered, meaning that the skin follicles uh, has a role in the pathophysiology uh, of uh, the disorder, as in case of folliculitis or acne vulgaris. Uh, in case of non follicular centers, a clinical example is postular psoriasis, uh, in, which uh, in which there is no uh, skin uh, follicle uh, involved uh, in the pathophysiology process. So after knowing the primary skin lesions, now we will move to the secondary skin lesion. Uh, as we said, in the primary skin lesion, the definition is the initial manifestation of the pathological process. In other words, it is the skin lesion that have not been altered to the three Cs, which is again, time, trauma, and uh, treatment. Uh, secondary skin lesions is completely uh, the opposite in terms of definition. So they are resulted from later evolution. This is the first T or external trauma. This is the second T and the 30 is uh, the treatment to a primary uh, lesion. Examples are scale, crust, erosion, ulcer, fissure, excoriation, lignification, and atrophy, and we will talk about them in the uh, next slide. We will start first crust. We will start first with a, a crust. A crust is a dry serum, pus, or blood. Uh, on, on the surface of the skin. A clinical example is uh, impetigo, which is uh, a skin uh, condition caused by uh, an infectious agent, which is uh, usually Staphylococcus aureus, causing these uh, dry, uh, dry honey-colored crust over the uh, upper part of Libya. And also, uh, as we can see here, there is an involvement of the right uh, nostril. Excoriation is exogenous injury to all or part of epidermis. 
it is uh, a secondary feature of pyruritic condition. We know in case of excretion that these kind of lesions are, are caused by the patient uh, himself to his own uh, skin, and this is important. So clinical example is neurotic excretion, which is a psychological uh, condition in which the patient intensely uh, scratch uh, his own skin, causing these kind of lesions. Lacnification is accentuation of the natural skin lines, meaning that they become more prominent, reflecting acanthosis uh, of the epidermis. Acanthosis meaning thickening of the epidermis uh, due to thickening of the stratum spinosum uh, layer, uh, often due to rubbing. Clinical example is lichen simplicus chronicus. As we can uh, see here over uh, the wrist uh, skin, uh, we can see here the accentuation of the natural uh, skin line uh, over the uh, wrist skin of left hand. Scale is hyperkeratosis. Hyperkeratosis means thickening of the epidermis in contrast to acanthosis, which is thickening of the epidermis due to the thickening of the stratum spinosum layer, the scale is thickening, uh, uh, scale or hyperkeratosis is thick, uh, thickening of the uh, epidermis due to the thickening of the stratum corneum layer, which is the uppermost layer. This, uh, this, this uh, is caused by either proliferation or delayed disquamation of uh, this layer. And this table uh, almost summarizes all types of scales and we will talk uh, about a few examples of uh, scales because uh, they are important and uh, usually, uh, usually seen in the clinic. We'll start first with the psoriasis form. Other, uh, other name is macaceous and ostracious scale. As the name implies, psoriasis form comes from psoriasis uh, disorder. Usually they form the silvery bottle uh, uh, thin plate they are like uh, they are arranged in uh, sheets like mica, and uh, this is where the name micaceous scale. Mica, it is a mineral like uh, like silver, and I have a picture for this mica. So as you can see here in the left picture, this is the mica. So if you say psoriasiform scale, micaceous scale, or uh, silvery scale, they all uh, they all have the same meaning. Uh, and on the right picture, we. We can see this uh, color black again, covered with these uh, silvery or micaceous scale over the extensor aspect of the kneecap. So when these uh, silvery or uh, micaceous scales come comes into a large collection, they form uh, what what is called ostracious scale. And again, ostracious scale comes from oyster. And you can see the, the resemblance between the oestricious scale uh, on the uh, right uh, picture uh, over the buttock and back uh, of this patient and the uh, outer uh, shell of uh, oyster. Greedy scale, greedy means sandpaper-like texture. These kind of scale usually, uh, they are densely adherent to the skin. And when, when you palpate them, you feel uh, the sand paper like uh, texture. A clinical example is actinic uh, keratosis, which is a precancerous skin lesion, usually uh, present over the uh, photo distributed or sun exposed uh, areas like head and neck and hand. Leading and trailing scale. In case of annular skin lesions, we have two edges either the leading edge, which is the outer edge, or the trailing edge, which is the inner edge. In case of scale over the leading edge, usually uh, this is in case of tinea corporal uh, infection. If we have a scale over, over the trailing edge, uh, this is usually manifested in a case called uh, erythema annularis centrifuge. The last uh, type uh, of scale uh, is ichthyosis form scale. Ichthyosis is a Greek word means a fish. Ichthyosis form, it is a fish-like uh, scale. A 
clinical example is uh, ichthyosis vulgaris, which is an autosomal dominant condition uh, in which uh, the skin of patients arranged in a geometric structure. They are arranged in parallel diamonds or uh, rectangular. And you can see the resemblance between uh, the magnified fish skin and uh, ichthyosis vulgaris skin. And you can see where, uh, from where the name uh, comes, ichthyosiform scale or fish-like scale. Now we'll move to another uh, kind of secondary lesion, which is erosion. Erosion is partial loss of, uh, of epidermis, uh, but it, it has the same definition of excoriation. But in case of excoriation, we know that these kind of lesions are caused by an exogenous injury, which is usually the patient himself causing these kind of injuries. But in case of erosion, these lesions are caused spontaneously. The patient uh, does not do anything to his own skin. A clinical example is pemphigus foliaceus, which is a bolus autoimmune uh, disorder causing these uh, flaccid bully. And when, uh, when these flaccid bully ruptures, they take the upper part uh, of epidermis, causing these kind of uh, lesions. Uh, over, uh, as you can see here in this picture, over the back uh, and uh, also the torso of this patient. Ulcer is a full thickness uh, loss of epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous uh, tissue. A clinical example is bioderma gangrenosum, which is usually manifested in a case of inflammatory bowel uh, disease, especially ulcerative colitis. Uh, as you can see here uh, in this picture, uh, this is an ulcerative lesion over the chin of tibia uh, surrounded with uh, these uh, volacious uh, borders. Fissure. Fissure is a linear cleft uh, of the skin and often uh, it is painful. Uh, it is caused by skin thickening or marked dryness or loss of elasticity. A clinical example is hand dermatitis. As you can see here, these fissure over the dorsum of the right hand and also some fissures uh, over the uh, little uh, finger. So this diagram uh, compares uh, ulcer, erosion, and fissure uh, uh, in terms of level. In case of ulcer, we can see there is an involvement of epidermis and dermis, so they usually heal uh, in scar formation. But in case of erosion, uh, there is an involvement on, only to the upper uh, part of epidermis, so they usually heal uh, to the uh, normal uh, skin. Atrophy, A means no, trophy means the growth. So literally, it, it means no growth. It could, it could involve any layer, epidermal, dermal, or uh, subcutaneous, and it is called lipotrophy. So a clinical example of uh, epidermal uh, atrophy is lichen sclerosis, and usually in case of epidermal atrophy, the skin will uh, appear shiny and wrinkled in appearance. Uh, a clinical example of dermal atrophy is a stria, which is usually uh, manifested in case of a uh, high level of uh, steroids, either exogenous, exogenous uh, or uh, endogenous, as in case of uh, Cushing syndrome, and these leaving caused by loss of the elastin collagen, which is usually uh, present in the dermal layer. Subcutaneous atrophy or lipotrophy uh, caused uh, uh, a clinical example is uh, lupus paniculitis, which is caused by an inflammation of a subcutaneous uh, layer causing uh, subcutaneous or lipotrophy. So now we we'll move to the second objective, which is how to describe a skin lesion. You start with the primary lesion, and we talked about the primary lesions, macule, batch, papule, nodule, wheel, and so on. You will talk about configuration and distribution, and we will talk about them in the uh, next slide. You will mention the number, if it is countable, like single, two, three. If it is uncountable, you will say multiple. Uh, border could be significant, as in case of differentiation between uh, erysipelas and cellulitis. Uh, color, you should mention the color. You should mention the size, like three by three centimeter, five by five centimeter, and you know that the size is important uh, in terms of lesions. Uh, you should mention secondary lesions, like scale, cross, excoriation, lichenification, or atrophy, uh, if there is any. Else. 
So we'll talk first about configuration. It is the external form or arrangement of specific Could be grouped, meaning that it is clustered together. Uh, sorry, it could be certain eight, meaning that it is incomplete circle uh, in which the circle uh, they are uh, breaks. Uh, it could be polycyclic, meaning that two circles come uh, together. It could be a uh, target. Uh, they are arranged in three concentric layer in which the outer is uh, dark and the inner is bare and the innermost, which is the most dusty or dark one. It could be serpentinous uh, snake-like uh, configuration. So uh, if I want to describe, for example, this region, I would say this is a single three by uh, four centimeter. Uh, with uh, annular or black with a pale uh, center and surrounded with uh, erythematous uh, rim and uh, it has a, a leading uh, scale so this is a case of uh, a senial uh, corporal uh, infection this is a, a, a case of cutaneous larva migrants in which there is a, a serpentinous uh, configuration so if i want to describe this legion i would say this is a single Eight by one uh, hyper uh, eight by one centimeter hyperpigmented serpentinous uh, black uh, over the foot of uh, this patient. But the, these lesions usually manifested as uh, multiple because uh, they they are parasitic infection. Uh, target configuration, uh, which is uh, usually manifested in case of erythema multiforme. And as I said, you can see these uh, target shaped legion, which is outer dark and inner pale, and the innermost, which is the most darky or most dusky uh, one. Location and distribution it is the pattern of spread of uh, legions, meaning that it could be generalized all over uh, the body, it could be localized to specific anatomical uh, position, it could involve the flexor. Uh, or the extensor flexors in case of atopic dermatitis, they could involve the anticubital, antipopliteal fossa extensor as uh, in case of psoriasis, and we saw it in the previous slide or over the knees. Pressure areas over uh, over the back of uh, back of uh, over the back of head occiput or over the sacrum heel. It could be dermatom following the neurocutaneous dermatom. It could be in the photosensitive, meaning the fun exposed area, like in case of actinic keratosis over the hands, the head, and the neck. Could be symmetrical, meaning that it involves both parts of the body. So this is an example of dermatomal distribution in case of herpes sister. We can see these multiple uh, tiny vesicles uh, with uh, with uni, unilateral distribution uh, over the thoracic uh, dermatom. And in case of uh, atopic, atopic dermatitis following uh, uh, dis uh, distributed over the flexor uh, uh, over the anticubital fossa. So color, it could be er erythematous or red. And a clinical example is moribiliform drug eruption. Moribiliform means measles-like drug eruption. As you can see here in this picture, we can see these generalized, uh, multi generalized three to four multiple uh, macupapillar uh, rash uh, and uh, over uh, erythematous uh, background also over the back and, uh, and the post arms. It could be green, and a clinical example is onculitis, which is separation uh, of the nail uh, bed with uh, se secondary to pseudomonas, uh, pseudomonas infection. It could be a blue, and a clinical example is dermal melanocytosis, or uh, the other name is Mongolian spot. We can see here multiple uh, well demarcated blue to green patches over the back of this baby uh, and also the buttocks. 
it could be brown, as in case of uh, melasma, we can see here uh, this single uh, three uh, by five uh, centimeter hyperpigmented uh, brown, well demarcated brown batch over the right cheek uh, of this patient. So I made uh, a couple of slides just to make you participate in this lecture. Uh, feel free either to write or uh, to or to speak. I will unmute, and if you want to write the description, just write, write it in the question and answer uh, box. So this is the first uh, slide, and this is the first lesions we talked about it. Just uh, take your time and feel free to describe it. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, any volunteer? Uh, so, this is the case of psoriasis. Uh, the primary uh, legion is uh, black, and we, and the secondary legion is uh, these uh, scales. So if you can connect these uh, words, you will reach a description. You should mention also the anatomical position, like uh, right hand, dorsum, dorsum of the right hand. Uh, so multiple uh, hard, multiple silvery sc uh, scaly plaques with an estimated space over the extensor surface of the right hand. Uh, Hassan, multiple plaques with scales over them in the dorsum of the right hand. Uh, good answer. Good answer. You should mention the size. Uh, if it is countable, uh, you should mention uh, the uh, the number. But I think because of the, uh, the extension to the fingers, uh, multiple uh, multiple description is uh, the right one. So good job, guys. Now we'll move to the next slide. Uh, this is a case of uh, seborrheic uh, keratosis, and the primary skin lesion is a papule. If you did the same uh, work that you did in the previous one, you will master it. Should mention that uh, the uh, anatomical position, like where it is, left cheek and forehead. I will start with the primary skin lesion, which is a vocule. Uh, the configuration Uh, okay, uh, I think the grammar, I didn't hear you well. Uh, anyway, I will describe it. So multiple, um, oh, we have one, multiple babule over the left cheek and forehead, ranging from few millimeter up to the large, 
it's largest about one by one centimeter. Yes. Uh, one point that if we we should we should describe the uh, most dominant legion, and if there is a different legion, you should we should describe it separately. But anyhow, you did a great job, Dr. Hassan. I will add one uh, thing that I didn't mention. Uh, this uh, legion has uh, a Gracie scale uh, on top of it, like a Suburic scale, uh, oily scale, uh, and this is characteristic uh, of uh, Suburic keratosis. But uh, for beginners, uh, it is a good description that you did, Dr. Hassan. Thank you. So these are my references for preparing uh, this lecture. Any questions? Uh, thank you, doctor, for this highly informative lecture. Now we will move to the questions. Uh, first question say, uh, any simple approach or summaries or mnemonics? Uh, for for mnemonics and uh, summaries, I think there are multiple YouTube, YouTube channels and websites. Uh, when I upload this uh, lecture on the YouTube, you will find them uh, in the description box below. I will provide all the links and uh, all the uh, web links also. Uh, second question, uh, how could I describe a legion without any investigation? Uh, Describing a legion, it is a clinical-based skill. Uh, it does not require any investigation. Uh, there are some tools that could be useful, like dermatoscopy and magnifying lens, but investigation per se, it does not uh, need any kind of investigation. Uh, okay, thank you, doctor. With this, we will end our meeting. I hope you are having fun and have a great day. Thank you.